Welcome to Greenlight Ventures presentation, a Monday edition, a uh, Peel Yourself Off the Mat Monday edition of Bearing Your Bookie. I'm Jeff DeForest. And uh, look, uh, you can cancel my audition to Naked and Afraid. I don't think I'll be going on the show. How am I going to survive out in the wilderness of some Costa Rican jungle where uh, disease laced mosquitoes and carrying mosquitoes are the size of clincher softballs and you got snakes and all kinds of wild animals. It's raining and lightning the entire time. Uh, you're trying to protect yourself with a leaf and a machete. Forget about that. How would we possibly survive under the most extreme of circumstances when we could not survive week number two of the survivor pool after changing our mind and waffling many, many times, we got caught up uh, just like everybody else in uh, not even following our own advice. That, that's the worst part about it, to be victimized by not even following your own very sound advice that we were beating our chest like Tarzan uh, the previous week. Yeah, we, we said dodge the big game, uh, the big spread game in week number one. Just hope to survive with another game. We did that. And as we were crowing about uh, how brilliant we were, all of a sudden we got caught up. And it, it was like going back to your ex-wife and assuming that something was going to be different. And sure enough, uh, the most uh, chosen game in the Survivor Pools over the weekend, of course, uh, was the Ravens, who were going to beat the Raiders like a drum at home. We're up 10 in the fourth quarter and managed to somehow uh, come from ahead and lose the game outright. And then knocked uh, in the circuit pool alone, knocked out 2,300 competitors. That Ravens game. So uh, more than half the people gone after week number two, including us. Now, if you are betting, and uh, we're going to try to redeem ourselves throughout the season. We're sorry, and uh, we were teetering. We'll get into the anatomy of a catastrophe in just a sec. But if you were betting, uh, Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform. Your number one source for everything football. Bet Online has every stat. Every matchup, even live odds during the game. They have all kinds of contests during the year as well, so uh, you can get involved there. When the game's over, head on over to the online casino. You can play poker. You can play blackjack. You can engage and indulge in over 150 slot games they make available to you, and they really uh, have it set up well for you to have some fun while you're home uh, at Bet Online. Head to the website today to get in on all the action, Bet Online. The game starts here. So where did it end for us? Uh, our advice was, uh, as we said, don't don't always take the path of least resistance well, when you're playing survivor pools. And uh, th there were many strategies that would have worked. Uh, at one time, I was hedging away from the Raiders and thinking, take the Houston Texans. They were likely to beat Caleb Williams and the Bears. They did. It was much more of a struggle than you would have anticipated. But nonetheless, uh, at uh, had you made that choice, you would have knocked out the big percentage of people that had the Ravens in week number two, same play, working week after week, and uh, you would have survived uh, with the Houston Texans and uh, moved on. Jimmy V, I mean, how sweet it is. Uh, survive and move on, uh, which is the name of the game. But, uh, wow, uh, I mean, uh, we, we got caught up in it, uh, ended up uh, with the Ravens. Uh, by all rights, they should have won the game. I, I was watching it, and I haven't really followed the uh, NFL red zone. I haven't really been a, a huge uh, uh, you know, user of the uh, NFL Red Zone. And uh, so I'm following this game because uh, I didn't get it uh, on my local television uh, broadcast and didn't feel like going out to a bar. Uh, the home team, the Miami Dolphins, which, by the way, is a, a whole other story right now, they were not in action. And you're thinking, oh, wow, it's a relief not to have to deal with the anxiety. I, I was involved in uh, coverage of the Miami Dolphins uh, almost since my arrival. Uh, in South Florida, which uh, came here in uh, the summer of 1981. At that time, the uh, Dolphins were still a fabled franchise, still basking in the glory of their early 70s march to three consecutive Super Bowls. Now, the notion that they would not have been back since and then would have uh, a long drought uh, of not winning a playoff game going back some 20 years uh, seemed a little far-fetched uh, at that time. But uh, I I've always been uh, pretty much immersed and doing something with the Dolphins organization. I mean, many years on the radio and the local uh, airwaves in South Florida, always uh, doing uh, hideously long pregame and postgame shows in between, broadcasting uh, from uh, the booth there during the game at halftime. And uh, so you're pretty much uh, absorbed in it. But uh, after years of being mired in mediocrity, uh, you got numb to it, and it was a pleasure, I would have to say, not to invest all of the anxiety that normally went along with following your team on a Sunday by having them already fall into a plat fall, uh, be flatter than a Parisian runway model on a Thursday night game where uh, everything is seemingly 
uh, went up in smoke. Uh, the uh, conversation around that team has uh, changed 180 degrees, although the latest word seems to be that Tua Tagovailoa, who we all saw get crushed there by Hamlin uh, of the Buffalo Bills, uh, oddly enough and ironically enough, uh, and, and was, I mean, not, not the kind of tackle that you're, you're looking and going, oh, my God, is this guy going to be okay? You're, you're thinking serious, uh, catastrophic injury. Uh, the guy uh, kind of ducked his head into the rib cage uh, of the uh, oncoming defender. Wasn't the highest uh, velocity collision or, or hardest collision that we've seen in the NFL. And yet uh, you kind of knew right away, which uh, maybe was an indicator that the people that are on the side of uh, Tua retiring uh, might have the right concept. But it looks like uh, for all intents and purposes, we've had some conversations about it uh, here with many of the reporters around town and, and uh, people that might have some insight into it. And it seems like the guy is going to come back, uh, maybe after the bye week. That, that being said, uh, all bets are off, uh, you would have to think, uh, on the Miami Dolphins as we progress through the rest of the season. But uh, it was nice not, not having to uh, watch them play. And, and yet, uh, that being said, uh, the the loss in the survivor pool well, was agonizing. And I'm watching it on the uh, NFL Red Zone, and it seems like every time they cut to this Raiders-Ravens game, uh, you have the uh, Ravens uh, have established a 10-point lead in the fourth fucking quarter. And uh, every time they, they flash back to it, they're, I mean, uh, the, the uh, Raiders are, are making phenomenal plays. Uh, just just uh, one at Minshew, taking them down the field there and, and chopping up this uh, vaunted Ravens defense uh, as um, if uh, they were uh, the Globetrotters going against the Washington Generals. And uh, and every time I, they flip to uh, the Ravens having possession, uh, Lauren Jackson is getting uh, literally like plowed into the turf. <laughs> by the oncoming pass rush. So, uh, and, and I, I have to admit being duped a little bit. Uh, if you're going to be handicapped and you're going to be betting, I, I don't know that you always uh, want, want to, uh, you know, have something ominous stick in your head that you read about the ball game. Cause um, the Raiders a week before that, the big knock on them was that they couldn't stop the run. So the Ravens were going to have a field day running a football against them. And on top of that, that was only going to make things even easier for Lamar Jackson to put a 40 spot on the board uh, against uh, as weak a run defense as we saw in week number one in the National Football League. But it goes to show you, you have to proceed with caution. Uh, big turnarounds week number one to week number two. We, we've been saying this, and uh, I, I was uh, routinely just skewered by uh, some of the people on Instagram. Uh, for saying that that you shouldn't bet the preseason. Uh, the, the truth is, this this really is the preseason, and, and we're seeing that evolve as you had tremendous turnarounds uh, from week one to week two. Uh, as far as the survivor pool goes, uh, we were going to our other option was the Texans or pick against the Carolina Panthers. The Panthers are awful. There's a pretty good chance. I mean, how bad of an organization can you be? Uh, they take it, and he seems like a good kid. They take Bryce Young with the number one overall pick. Uh, they, they trade like 500 draft picks to the Bears uh, in order to get into that position. Uh, it's turning out to be an outright disaster. It's catastrophic to this point uh, where uh, you're considering benching this guy while the guy that was taken second, C.J. Stroud, is on his way to the Hall of Fame and has already made people forget about Johnny Unitas. The guy's been looking good for the Houston Texans. So uh, the Texans were, were the second most chosen game in the Circa uh, Survivor Pool. The Chargers uh, going against the Panthers, of course, uh, were third. But then uh, a lot of people went down, uh, went up and smoked. The Lions losing outright. Uh, Jaguars were one of the uh, favorite picks there, although only about 10% uh, compared to what the Ravens drew in terms of selections. Cowboys, uh, I mean, are, are the New Orleans Saints a team that we really have to uh, consider as being one of the top teams in the league? I, I believe, is this a, I don't know if it held up all the way to the end of the game, but uh, at least at one point that they had scored on every possession that they had had so far through two games uh, of this NFL season. Th this is a team, uh, remember Dennis Allen? Saint fans couldn't stand this guy. They were putting some kind of voodoo curse on him uh, as recently as last year, saying that they will never go anywhere as long as Dennis Allen is the coach. Now, they did make a subtle change. I'm not sure uh, how much uh, tangible uh, credibility that, that there is to the idea that you changed the coordinator. We, we've seen it work in certain situations where there was a dramatic turnaround. Uh, I believe Gary Kubiak came in to be the offensive coordinator now of the New Orleans Saints. And all of a sudden, Alvin Kamara, who uh, had done a, a disappearing act uh, in, in last season uh, by comparison to his effectiveness uh, overall in his career, 
has resurfaced and is a monster. Scores four touchdowns yesterday, and uh, you have the uh, much maligned Derek Carr. I think that actually is applicable applicable to uh, Derek Carr. Uh, people have been knocking this guy forever. Uh, at times, he's shown signs of life. Uh, doesn't look like somebody that you're really going to be able to bank on long term. Saints uh, took a shot with the guy, and uh, he, he acquitted himself uh, pretty well, but uh, nothing uh, sensational. And yet, so far this year, it's just absolutely spectacular. So uh, they're, they're scoring on every possession. They put up uh, over 90 points already through uh, two weeks of the NFL season. And they shellack the Cowboys, who just a week before looked like they had perhaps made a case for uh, consideration as, as a Super Bowl contender, did they not? They gave Dak the money. Uh, C.D. Lamb was happy. Jerry Jones was all smiles. Uh, although Jerry's... He's had so much plastic surgery that uh, I think when he smiles, he passes gas. That, that was true of Frank Gifford also. I ran into Frank Gifford in an elevator one time. And, uh, you know, Frank uh, looked like he was 35 years old, even when he was in his 80s and he was still doing Monday Night Football. So uh, I'm going up in an elevator in a stadium uh, here in Miami. And uh, Frank Gifford's in there. And uh, he literally, I mean, he had the face of an iguana. <laughs> and we said something to him. And when he smiled, Unfortunately, uh, you know, we didn't want to tell him, but uh, you know, it was clear that, that he had passed gas. That, that's, that's what's happening with Jerry Jones. And, and there are a lot of people, I'm sure, around the country that uh, follow Barrier Bookie and uh, all the other shows here on NoFilter.net and the various other platforms that uh, as much as the Cowboys uh, would like to believe that they are still America's team, uh, I don't know that there isn't uh, a much larger contingent of people that uh, far outnumber the supporters of the Cowboys and absolutely revel in every loss and negative thing that happens to the team. Is that essentially true? Aside from the cheerleaders, we put parentheses around that. They're still fine, right? But uh, there, there's always uh, those mocking memes uh, on social media of a picture of the current Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders and then uh, a picture of the last time they won the Super Bowl and it's a bunch of old bags. <laughs> looked like they were asking for spare change as you were getting off a subway car in New York, and you're like, oh, wait a minute, what happened to these women? Yeah, that illustrates the point. It was a long time ago. But if you looked at week number one, they looked pretty good, did they not? The Dallas Cowboys, to get shellacked like that by the New Orleans Saints, uh, might have to rethink our position on the Saints, although still very early in the 17-game uh, season. Uh, does this stat hold up? Is this true? I keep hearing this, and it's running through my head that uh, only 6%, is that possible, of teams that start out 0-2 like the Ravens have? Only 6% of those teams make the postseason? Is that just in the last five years or so? Because uh, with the 17 games, you would have to think that uh, maybe as pivotal as, say, the Thursday night game might have been between the Dolphins and the Buffalo Bills for a lot of reasons, as pivotal as that game might have been in the AFC Eastern Division race and the possibility for tiebreakers later on and playoff positioning, that you still had plenty of time to recover if you had 15 games left on the slate. All right, we gave out some games. We had a pretty successful week. Our Degenerate Friday worked out well. Uh, the professor went 3-2 and two as uh, he had um, Memphis over FSU. Uh, that turned out to be a winner. He had uh, Old Miss uh, over Wake Forest, name your score. They were laying about, I think he had it at 21 and a half, and they just pretty much uh, wrote you a check there. Uh, that was great. South Carolina getting points over LSU. LSU came back and they eked that game out, but didn't cover the point spread. So he wins those three games, and then he lost uh, with uh, San Diego State. They lose by 21 while getting 18 and a half to Cal, and uh, also uh, lost uh, with uh, Arizona which uh, was getting seven from Kansas State. They got shellacked. So three and two for the professor. Now, it was a great week for underdogs uh, th this past week, especially in the NFL. Dogs went eight, five, and one against the spread and seven and seven straight up. That, uh, for you statistical followers, is the third time in the last nine seasons that uh, you have seen those kind of numbers, uh, that you've seen a seven and seven straight up Sunday in the National Football League by the underdogs, 8-5-1 and one against the spread. So if you were betting the dogs, you were coming out in pretty good shape. And that uh, bode well for our friend Mark Lawrence, whose picks we gave you on Friday, and we'll give them to you uh, every Friday. Uh, he did win uh, one of his two college games with Washington State, getting five. They went out right 24-19 over Washington in the Apple Bowl, and uh, then uh, got buried alive as uh, Oregon easily shellacked Oregon State. 
as uh, you had a 49-14 uh, debacle in that one. So uh, one one in the college games, but it wins both pro games. Uh, Cleveland getting three, winning outright at Jacksonville. Jacksonville off to an 0-2 start. And uh, the Bengals uh, getting six against the Chiefs uh, by all rights. Uh, the Bengals could have won that ball game, but uh, they nonetheless uh, fall. Uh, and uh, wow, in, in usual fashion, how how lucky are the Kansas City Chiefs? Is it better to be lucky than good? I mean, I, I know they're good, but uh, they, they certainly have more than their share of good fortune. Uh, now, that was a legitimate call, the pass interference on a fourth and 16. You're going to not only be uh, outside of field goal range uh, anyway, but uh, they, they they were done. I mean, it's a fourth down play. And a uh, guy comes over the back of the uh, potential Chiefs receiver, and uh, Mahomes does the usual thing. And, of course, uh, he may as well just be carrying the flags himself because they certainly give the Chiefs every benefit of the doubt. But in this case, it was a le- legitimate call. I- even if you got uh, beaten, uh, in this case, you were going down to the points uh, also. Uh, if you were, were betting and back in the Chiefs, they were laying six and a half. Uh, so the Bengals had that wrapped up. But uh, I had the ball game until that happened. And then Butker, notice how everybody forgot about those outrageous statements he was making before the season where uh, he was talking about some kind of bizarre religiosity. And uh, everybody was alarmed. Uh, even Roger Goodell was like, well, I don't know if you should have said that. And, and Roger doesn't usually weigh in on any kind of criticism. I mean, uh, look, uh, People keep challenging him to have these uh, rappers that he's having perform at halftime uh, of the Super Bowls and say, hey, Raj, why don't you read the lyrics to one of their songs to your children around the dinner table, Mr. $70 million disciplined? <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, uh, yeah, it, it was uh, just raw ugliness. And uh, it, you uh, you know, uh, ho- hopefully we're able to make a score uh, over the weekend if you were playing the uh, underdogs. Uh, uh, all right, uh, the Monday night game tonight, we have that. And, and last week we were very tepid about it. I'm just as tepid about it uh, tonight. The uh, Monday night game uh, with the Eagles and the Falcons going at it. Eagles and the Falcons. The Eagles uh, looked okay. I mean, uh, it wasn't exactly a stellar performance. It was week number one, uh, and, and they were playing, what, in Brazil somewhere, some some bizarre location that Goodell had designated for the uh, first game of the season. Uh, they take on the Falcons. Uh, Kirk Cousins, of course, was a big investment for the uh, Falcons. Kirk Cousins, who probably has milked the system better than anybody since Neil O'Donnell in, in terms of getting paid maximum money for – I mean, the guy's a good quarterback. I, I don't know. I mean, are you really excited if Kirk Cousins is your quarterback? Uh, probably not, uh, even though uh, he, he's had his share of good results, favorable results, but uh, nothing overwhelmingly spectacular when the so-called money was on the table. So it comes in, uh, it's going to be an upgrade, and you're thinking, uh, and the Falcons also spend a high draft pick on a quarterback, and uh, that was kind of a curious move as they get the kid from uh, Washington, and you're asking yourself, uh, what, what the hell is this franchise thinking? Uh, Cousins uh, coming off an Achilles injury has not necessarily uh, looked the same uh, just yet. I mean, it's a limited sample, one game, but uh, uh, people are, are commenting that uh, perhaps his uh, movement is not up to speed yet uh, from his Achilles uh, recovery, you know, watching him in practice. And so uh, I, I don't know what kind of a threat he offers uh, to the uh, Philadelphia Eagles tonight. Eagles are laying six in this game. And uh, I'm tempted as, as much as these upsets were all across the board in the NFL this past week. And we saw gigantic and, and almost complete reversals of form by many teams. I, I'm thinking the Eagles at home against the Falcons tonight probably prevail And uh, a very squeamish vote to go ahead and uh, lay as many as six points with the Philadelphia Eagles tonight in the Monday night football game. So we'll we'll make that an official suggestion and uh, selection and hope that it doesn't go the same fate as the Ravens going up in smoke. Why? Why me? I mean, I feel like Nancy Kerrigan. So much logic was there. Uh, When you go back to the X, does it ever work? It, It never works, right? Everything that was happening before that was wrong just uh, resurfaces and uh, becomes exponentially worse. So when you go against your own advice in uh, degenerate endeavors, you have to think twice, people. We we could have uh, been in a very favorable position, and instead, we're looking for the proverbial morphine uh, drip. (laughs) All right, great being with you. Uh, Tomorrow, feature Scotty M. He'll he'll have uh, some games for you. He's uh, all over it with uh, college and 
and pro football. And uh, we're not going to ignore uh, baseball either uh, on the show. Troy West going to join us here on Wednesday. Friday, we'll have the professor and uh, the selections of Mark Lawrence from PlaybookSports.com. And uh, we'll uh, be with you all throughout the week here. We're hoping that we can make you some money. Going to go ahead and, uh, I mean, very. you talk about Joe Philbin said he uh, felt a little squeamish about uh, the uh, possibilities of an upcoming Dolphin game when he was coach. Got himself fired as a result. Uh, very squeamish about this pick. Uh, Eagles tonight laying the six against a Falcon team that uh, I, I, I just don't think is going to get their money's worth out of Kirk Cousins this year. So he'll probably throw for five touchdowns, and uh, they'll win 35-6. to six. All right, we'll see you next time. Thanks for being with us. Uh, for everybody connected with NoFilter.net and uh, all of our good friends, sorry, Henry, about the Ravens. I think his dad had his uh, survivor pool also come to a quick and abrupt end. So uh, while we're uh, breaking out the pine boxes and the body bags for the people that had the Ravens, we'll see you tomorrow on the next edition of Bury Your Bookie. 